What a journey 2019 has been. I have learned so much. I've developed and I've um, expanded in my thinking and I just really want to share some thoughts with you and I hope this is just uncut video, unfiltered, just sharing my heart, things I've learned and it's going to be available on podcasts, Instagram, Facebook and all that kind of stuff, okay? We're going to get into it. The number one I th learned th thing I learned um, in 2019 was the relationship that I prioritize first in my life will carry the most influence into my future. Now, I've had to ask myself the question, is my fiance number one or is God number one? Is my parents number one? Is my church number one or is God number one? And I've I've learned that is every time I ask that question, I, I am aligned back to my purpose and aligned back to understanding that if God isn't first for me, things are not going to work out very well. Um, so I've always put God first and always before me. So I've seen that as I do that, because he knows my future, things tend to normally work out to his knowledge. Okay. Um, number two, I learned that what is killing people today is how busy they are. So we have to ruthlessly eliminate hurry. We have to pause, we have to think, and then we have to live. We don't have to rush, and we have to live from a place of clarity. I've learned that the clearer my thoughts, the clearer my life. So patience always pays off. I have to take time um, during um, busy schedules to um, just declutter, okay? I, and, and, and for me, I've learned that that's hard. It's not easy because I've got so many things going on. So as I declutter and as I um, live my life from a place of um, clarity, I'm going to feel that um, I'm accomplishing not everything, but exactly what God wants me to accomplish. So with that in mind, I want to encourage you, uh, maybe you've had a really busy year, Take some time out just to think about if you are D, if you if you're cluttered, okay. Number three, who am I living to impress? Okay, that question I have to ask myself quite often. Am I living to impress myself, my friends, my 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 followers, or, or, or the people that engage with me, or am I trying to impress? God, Jesus. So I had to ask myself because I try to do everything and anything. And as I do did that, I found that I was burning out quite often and I was becoming unhealthy. Um, and I've learned one thing at the age of 27. You can't do everything and you don't have to do everything. You just have to do what God's calling you to do. Okay. Number four, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Number five, living like Jesus means abiding in the Father, okay? Now, Jesus did exactly what he saw his father do. He said what his father said, and he was so effective. Three years of ministry, and he changed the whole world. And so if I'm going to live like Jesus, I'm going to have to have uh, a place of intimacy. Um, uh, moments in my day where I am engaging with God and engaging with his voice to hear what he has to say. So every morning, I try to hear God's voice and I hear the instruction for the day. And as I do that, I find that I am so um, effective because I'm moving in the spirit um, and I'm not just moving in my mind, okay? Number six, um, knowing God and experiencing God is two different things. I Learning means nothing if you're not able to demonstrate it, okay? So what I mean by that is a lot of us have theory. We have a lot of head knowledge, but do we have... Um, that experience, because if you don't have experience, then what you validate is not really there, okay? Um, number seven, to be successful means you have to have a great attitude while remaining teachable. Oh my goodness, I have learned that the greatest successful people um, that I come across are learning from everyone. They're learning because they want to understand people. Remember, we're un we're, our economy is made up of people, not money, people. So when we understand people, we're going to have better returns, okay? Number eight, it's okay not to know something. Just admit it rather than beating around the bush. For me, I had to admit quickly that I didn't know things and rather than beating around the bush. I, ha I had to confront conversations and immediately state the fact that, hey, I don't know. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I need you to elaborate. I need you to explain. I need you to be a bit more clear because remember, um, if I try to explain something I don't really understand, um, I'm making myself a fool, okay? So it's okay. If you don't know something, you don't have to act like you do. You just say you don't. It's going to make your life much easier. Um, number nine, pay attention to signs. 
I'm paying attention to opportunities, I'm paying attention to doors, I'm paying attention to people, I'm paying attention to every single thing that happens in my life because sometimes God is speaking through the signs. Um, number 10, love people more without agenda. Okay, now this is great because subconsciously all of us go into a relationship because we know um, there is something valuable that the other person may have now we may not state it or emphasize it in the very first moment of meeting but we all engage in meaningful relationships so why else would we call it meaningful there has to be um, reason to have relationship with people right and so when you get to a place of loving people without agenda you're gonna find that you um, have less expectation and uh, less disappointment. Now, when I mean uh, expectation, I'm not saying that um, you're not clear and that you're just going open-minded and open-hearted. I'm saying that you're not keeping your expectations as the number one priority, okay? If you love people first and foremost, you're gonna see great rewards, great returns. If you're genuinely interested in people, you're gonna see that your life is gonna be impacted for the better, okay? So I've learned, love people more without an agenda. Um, number 11, you don't have to reply to every comment and backlash because you're not living for them. This is great. Number 12, ask intelligent questions and talk less. Oh my goodness, I love this one. I've, had, I've learned one thing. I, when I hear people talk, I hear that they're just talking to each other. They're not really asking questions. They're not really learning about each other. So I've learned that in a conversation, I have to talk less about myself and I have to genuinely learn about the other person and engage in what they have to say. So by one of the ways I do that is repeating back what they say to me so that they know I understand what they say. So tailoring your experience and adapting to them is gonna really, really help you, okay? What I mean by that is, every person's difference. If you talk to every individual the same way, which I did, and I lost, I am telling you right now, you will lose. Every time you think that people understand you one way, you're losing, you're missing, you're not genuinely building relationship. You've got to understand there are different types of people in the world, and you have to tailor your conversation to um, their specific um, way of understanding, okay? Uh, number 13, God does not speak to you about people you don't like. Now, this is great because a lot of us that uh, mystical or experience think that God is speaking to us about certain people. Listen, if you don't generally love people, God's not going to speak to you about them, okay? If you generally don't like someone, why would God speak to you about them? It's a really good question, by the way. Um, number 14, hearing God and acting on what He says can literally shift your life in a moment. Now, this comes out of intimacy because God's always speaking, but we're not always listening. So, I've learned. If I want to engage with God, I have to take a moment to pause, rest, and engage with what He's saying in the very moment. God's always speaking. God's always interested. I just have to learn to hear Him, okay? Now, hearing God can shift things dramatically. It can shift things forever. But the problem is we're so busy tapping into our own mind that we don't really hear God for what He's really saying, okay? Number 15, believe God for crazy things. What do you have to lose? You have nothing to lose when you believe a God that is unlimited, omniscient, omnipotent. God is great. And because He's great, you have the ability to um, literally learn from Him. Um, number 16. Take criticism as valuable feedback. Okay, Take criticism as valuable feedback. Feedback is a way people actually care about you. So if you feel attacked, it could be your ego. Now, let me break this down. I used to take people's longest messages or short messages about me um, when they used to text me and say, Josh, you don't like this, you're like that, you're not really doing what you're meant to be doing. And I used to really get attacked. And then I realized one day, it's not really me getting attacked, it's my ego getting attacked. And so if I want to be effective as a leader, as a person, I'm going to have to take what they say as feedback and apply it to when they experience me very clear never take criticism as someone attacking you take it as valuable feedback for you to grow and improve and if you have that mindset you will guarantee i'm telling you right now you will guarantee success okay um number 17 we've got two more hang in there pride is real and it's subtle pride surfaces daily deal with pride by having people around you that call it out i've had people that 
have called me out and it's great because sometimes I can't see the pride in me and so I need people around me that don't see um, the way I see to call things out and so genuinely if you ha if you don't have pride and if you're not dealing with your pride every single day uh, you got to have people around you that are not like you because they will literally ch they will literally call you out and it's great to have people like that by the way um, uh, let me do the last one and we are out of oh, the well, last two one last two don't assume things the devil is working in your assumption you're getting nothing from taking the time to assume why I'm writing this now let me break that down okay there's a lot of words there all I want to say is this don't assume things every time you assume things you make an if you break the word assume out you'll know what I mean but let me tell you one thing don't assume because you can't you create narratives in your head about things you don't even know and you make you, you believe stuff that you made up in your mind and it's funny because a lot of people live their life of assumptions not in reality not objectively they live subjectively and not understand that there is a difference in how other people are viewing things okay so I've learned that in my life that if I live off assumptions I know the enemy's working there because he's creating narratives in my head like oh, oh my god he didn't talk to me or she didn't talk to me oh man something must be wrong and then all of a sudden I have like 20 different narratives of why I've done something wrong or they've done something wrong or something's gone wrong you see what I'm saying don't assume things don't waste your time assuming things it won't help you and number 19 I hope this is helping somebody Stop defending yourself. This is the greatest thing I had to learn. I have to learn to listen. I had to learn to take a breath, take a moment, and listen to what the other person is saying, not listening um, to reply, but listening to understand. Okay? I, in conversations, would interrupt all of a sudden trying to defend myself because I thought I was right. And I've noticed that a lot of my friends also do the same thing. I've had to take a moment in my life to be like, listen, Maybe the person is saying something that I don't see. I've had to take feedback and apply it to my life. And as a result, I've become better. I have literally learned that as I um, take feedback, I'm becoming better. So I've learned simply this. Don't defend yourself or don't try to prove yourself or don't try to make a case. Just hear what the other person is saying and don't cut them off. You watch your life, your communication, your relationships will greatly improve. Now, guys, thank you so much. It's been 12 minutes of content. I hope you've helped, been helped. I know it's 19 things in 2019, it's a long list. But listen, I wanna help you. 2020 is gonna be great. 2019, what is the last year of this decade. We're going to a new decade. We're going to become greater people, people with clarity, people with um, a mindset to succeed, and people that walk like Jesus. I'm so excited because we're going to live a life of influence, insight, and intimacy with Jesus.